When you think of high-end amplifiers, what brands come to mind? I can safely say I wouldn't have directed you towards mass market brands like Denon until now. The PMA A110 Integrated Amplifier is Denon's flagship amplifier designed and built to commemorate the brand's 110-year anniversary. This beast is anchored by Denon's seventh-generation ultra-high current push-pull amplifier circuit that churns out 80 watts per channel into 8 ohms and 160 watts into 4. While this amp doesn't produce the type of power you're going to find with Levinson, Krell, Macintosh, or Pass Labs, there's likely enough to drive most loudspeakers to a high level thanks to its clean delivery and low distortion. Distortion. Whether connected to the Bowers & Wilkins 805D4, Focal Canta No. 1, Perlison S4B, or Polk Audio's R700, the Denon didn't miss a beat. The Denon is a minimalist's integrated. It has no wireless, Bluetooth, or smart features, but it has enough analog and digital inputs to still be competitive. The Denon has five analog inputs, which include a moving magnet, moving coil, phono preamp. There is a preamp input as well. Note, I said preamp input, which lets you use the A110 as a standalone amplifier when connected to a separate preamp. Sadly, there is no preamp outputs for use with a subwoofer or secondary amplifier. The built-in DAC uses four PCM1795 Burr Brown chips that support DSD files as well as high-res audio signals up to 32384, though you will have to use the DAC's USB B input for those types of files. The coaxial and optical digital inputs are limited to 24192, which isn't uncommon. For a 2.0 home theater, you can set either the optical or coaxial input to auto on, which will turn the A110 on when you power up your TV. The Denon also has an auto off feature. So while it lacks an HDMI input and all the convenience that it brings, the auto on off capability means it can react somewhat like an HDMI connected device when used with a modern television. When it comes to design and build quality, this amp is solid. Okay, visually, I think it looks really nice, but I believe Christy is gonna disagree with me, but we'll save that for later. There is no mistaking the A110 for anything but a modern Denon amplifier. While larger and made from way nicer materials, the A110 still has the brand's trademark look. Large center-mounted volume dial flanked by tone controls to the left and a small display and input selection dial to the right. I honestly could have done without the display on this unit, as it doesn't really do all that much apart from showing you which input is selected. Thankfully, it can be defeated. As for build quality, forget about it. This is among the more solidly built integrators we've had on this channel. As for setup, there isn't much to the Denon. Connect your components and enjoy. We use the A110 with our Audio-Technica LP140 XP turntable, as well as with digital components like our Node and the Apple TV 4K, not to mention our Sony X95K, as part of a 2.0 home theater setup. We tested the Denon using pretty much every speaker we have in-house, but did the bulk of our testing using the Bowers & Wilkins 805D4s, Focal Canta No. 1, Perlison S4B, and the Polk Audio R700 towers, all of which sounded great, though my two favorites were the B&Ws and the Polks. The A110 has balance as well as tone controls. Yay! <laughs> so those of you who like to tailor your speaker sound, you can adjust the treble and bass response of your connected speakers, plus or minus 8 dB. The treble tone control affects frequencies above 10 kHz, with bass being affected below 100. So no monkeying with your speaker's mid-range. You can also put the amp into an all-analog mode, as well as a source direct mode for best results. In terms of sound quality, not gonna beat around the bush. I love the way the A110 sounds. It arrived just as Christy and I were carrying out some A-B tests of the Technics R1000 and another one of my favorite integrated amplifiers, the Canner AI110, which is a tube amp. The Denon had elements of both the Technics and the Canner. The A110 had almost all of the detail and separation present in the R1000, but it also had the body and warmth of the Canner. So if you were to ask me to recommend and an amp with good detail, but also some tube-like warmth, the A110 is where I would send you, but let me break it down. 
One thing you need to know about the Denon, it does not sound 100% neutral. It has a little bit more weight and emphasis in the bass and low mid bass, which results in a fuller, more rich sound. The bass is very textural and nuanced, but in direct comparison to an amp like the R1000, the Denon feels a tad slower. So instruments like double bass or kick drums have great scale, terrific detail, and presence. But when it comes to speed or dynamics down low, amplifiers like the Technics or even the less expensive Roxxon Atessa they're gonna feel more agile. To Denon's credit, these same instruments have more body and dimension. I'm talking about a truer sense of the space around the instruments themselves. So when it comes to the bass, you have to ask yourself, do you prefer a quicker attack, but maybe a leaner sound or a greater sense of weight and scale? When listening to our BMW 805s or even the Polk R700s, I personally preferred their sound through the Denon. In the mid-range, the Denon ranks among my favorites. Vocals have amazing presence. This amp excels at fleshing out performers in three-dimensional space rather than rendering them as disembodied heads floating in the center of a soundstage. Listening to Nirvana's MTV Unplugged or Fantagram's You Don't Get Me High Anymore, both Kurt and Sarah's vocals sounded more real and natural. There was just a greater sense of the artist's actual physicality through the Denon compared to the Technics. Vocals and instruments like piano or acoustic guitars did seem to have just a hint of extra body or weight, perhaps skewing their absolute tonal accuracy away from neutral, but I didn't really mind. Where the Denon's warmer tone and slightly rolled off, call it tube-like sound, really shines, regardless of the speaker pairing, is in the highs. Similar to the PMA 900, if you want to tame your too bright speakers, the A110 is an amp that I would recommend. Highs are noteworthy in their air and extension, but what I loved is that they don't sound one dimensional or brittle when listening to more compressed recordings. Only our Canner and Deckware amps, both of which are tube based designs, share this trait. I could hear a greater sense of detail when listening to the Technics, especially connected to our BMWs, but I preferred the mildly softer and rounder presentation of the Denon when it came to the high frequencies. Moving on to Soundstage, this amp ranks up there as one of my favorites. It excels at rendering a venue's sense of physical space. The Soundstage is vast and has terrific depth, though what I love most is the sense of appreciable air and space that surrounds every performer and instrument. The Technics is more etched and laser focused in direct comparison, but the Denon, at least spatially, sounds more realistic or live versus the Technic's more control room-like feel. The only other amps we have in house that have a soundstage as organic as the Denon are the Canner and Deckware. Dynamically, the Denon is softer, rounder, and as Christy puts it, slower. As you turn things up though, the Denon finds a bit more confidence, but head to head, it is the smoother operator when compared to other top flight amplifiers. As for comparisons, well, I've already made a ton throughout this review, so if you just skip to this part, you've missed out. So go back, watch the review, come back and join me. For the rest of you, as for the Technics R1000, it still reigns supreme as the top dog in our house, though it does not outright embarrass the Denon in a head-to-head. -head. The Technics costs twice as much, but I don't think it gives you twice the performance. So it is a win for Technics and their R1000, but it can't beat the value proposition of the A110. As for the Macintosh 7200, this one is very close because both amps share similar sonic qualities. The Macintosh wins because it can be outfitted with modern conveniences like HDMI. Throw in Herculean power and a bit more visual flair and the 7200 still remains one of my all-time favorites. That said, like with the Technics, the A110 is not embarrassed by the 7200, and at less than half the cost, one could argue it's a poor man's Macintosh. Win to Macintosh, but again, the Denon's up there. Here we go, compared to the Rotel 1592 Mark II, I know, y'all thought I forgot about it, the Rotel delivers way more power, and it is the power that you're going to hear and feel in the bass department. But like the Technics, the Rotel is going to err more on the side of being ultra precise, whereas the Denon prides itself on having a little bit more old school character. Which is best is ultimately up to you, but for me, I'm actually giving the nod to Denon. If you missed our Rocks and Atessa review, be sure to watch it after this video, but for the too long didn't watch crowd, it's a great amp, and at just over $3,000, it is comparable to the Denon. Me personally, I can't decide between the Atessa or the Denon which I prefer, and Honestly, it really does come down to my mood most days. I could be happy with either, and I believe many of you could too, so let's call it a tie. The A110 versus the Marantz Model 40N. I'm Team Denon.
The 40N is great, no question, but the Denon adds a layer of refinement top to bottom over the Marantz. The Marantz has more features, but if you can stretch your budget an extra grand or so, the Denon is the better sounding amplifier. The Denon A110 has proven to be one of the biggest surprises this year. I asked Denon for it not to review it, but because I wanted to film it alongside the BMW 805D4s. After listening to it behind the scenes, I had to share my thoughts with all of you because I love this amp. I know I have been somewhat critical of Denon over the years, but as far as I'm concerned, the A110, it's the real deal. So that's it. That is now my take on Denon's fantastic A110. And I know we don't need a second opinion, but what do you <laughs> what do you got to say about it, Christy? All right. Well, let's just get where you're wrong out of the way first. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I actually really like the look of this amp. What? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the hell you were talking about earlier, but... I was talking about a previous conversation we had off the record weeks ago where you said it was dumb? Nuh-uh. I did not. All right. Anyway, you got I... that one wrong. Okay. Uh, I, I actually really like it. I think it's sophisticated. It's sleek. It's mm -hmm. incredibly well made. It looks expensive as you know what. Yeah. So, yeah, I actually... I think it's a very beautiful amp oh well my apologies for putting words in your mouth yeah yeah you should stop doing that <laughs> anyway move, moving beyond the design okay so during the review you asked a really fantastic question hmm. you said and i quote when it comes to the bass, you have to ask yourself do you prefer a quicker attack but a leaner sound or a greater sense of weight and scale mm-hmm and I thought that was such a good question because it really made me stop and think about why I like some of the things that I like mm -hmm. in this hobby. Mm -hmm. So my answer is I'm always going to prefer the quicker attack. Okay. And to me, this perfectly illustrates that while I do like the Denon, mm -hmm. and I think it's a very good amplifier, mm -hmm. it is not the one I would ultimately choose for myself. Okay. Uh, for me, that warmer sound that you described in the review, it can... At times, I feel like it makes music come across, and you and you alluded to this, like mm -hmm. it makes music come across as slow to me. Some mm -hmm. songs feel like they're just dragging. Mm -hmm. um, now, now I wouldn't say that the Denon is anywhere near as sluggish as something like um, some of the amps that you get from Cambridge Audio. Mm. You know, to me, a lot of their amps, especially like the CXA line mm -hmm. and up, Oh, you know, I don't know. It just feels like most most of that music feels like the drummer needs a metronome to keep pace or something. You know, like I just really like, oh, come on, let's keep, let's get keep it moving. going. Yeah. The Denon, that lack of quickness is where it falls short for you, for me. OK. Now, you talked about the the B&W speakers and like your you preferred the Denon with that. Yeah, yeah. With those particular speakers. Yeah. I, again, this is another area where we are we are going to disagree on that. Okay. Um, with the B&Ws especially, I preferred the Technics and the Roxon mm. and even the Rotel. Okay. Um, and in that order, if you're keeping score. <laughs> <laughs> to me, I feel like the Technics R1000 and the Roxon uh, ha both have a way more detailed sound, which I prefer. Yeah. I just personally wouldn't call them lean. I, okay, okay, okay. I mean, maybe they're leaner, leaner in, in comparison. Yeah, in comparison, but yeah. I, I wouldn't call them lean. No, no. Well, for me, I think the reason why, when it comes to the BMW 805 D4s, why I like the Denon BMW pairing is when listening to very specific tracks like Moby's Ever Loving or Seville off the Mission Impossible Two soundtracks. These are two tracks that have been with me forever. Like I've been listening to them since the '90s. Um, and I recall when I had the 80, 800 D2s from BMW, probably what, 12, 15 years ago, those two tracks were very heavy in rotation in terms of evaluating products. And there's no denying that the older D2 series of the 800 series from BMW had a little bit of a darker sound. And the Denon sort of brought the current BMW sound and rolled the tape back a little bit to somewhere approaching, I'm not saying it's the same, but somewhere approaching that generation two sound 
that I was just so in love with. So it's a more of a nostalgia factor for me, I think, okay. than something that is like a tone that I'm going to tell you guys to rush out and and get. If you know what I'm talking about, you might be like, mm-hmm, my man. But if you are like, that sounds like something I don't want, then you shouldn't do that, that pairing. Um, but yeah, the Denon just, it reminded me the most of the Canner amp. It just felt like a solid state version of the Canner um, for way less money. Well, that helps me to understand better what you were talking about. I, w I do agree with you. I think that it is one of the more similar amps to the Canner mm -hmm. tube-like sound. I still feel like the, um, the, the Canner does a better job at handling those lower bass notes. Um, it does, but it does it in a different way. I mean, I don't pretend to understand what yeah. is happening. I just know, I'm just telling you what I feel like I hear. But yeah. anyway, moving on okay. to the Marantz Model 40N mm. versus the Denon. Okay. Now, here's another, again, we're, I, we, we, I guess we're just really not on the same page when it comes to this particular amp. Uh, to me, the battle is a close one, mm -hmm. but I do give the Marantz the edge. Really? Yeah. Yes, convenience is a factor, but mm -hmm. that's not all of it. Okay. But the fact that it has HDMI is a huge advantage to me. Okay. I have a just um, I just have a slight preference for the 40 in sound. Hmm. Uh, I don't feel like it is quite as warm as the Denon, so okay. that is um, another reason why I would choose it mm -hmm. over the A110. Okay. But in in bringing it back to design and looks, I actually do prefer the look of the Denon. Mm. I think that the Marantz is a very cool looking product and I love that they've taken the the, the style and design language in a different direction sure. over at Marantz. I, I'm not saying that I don't like it, um, but I feel like the Denon is just a little bit more sophisticated. Just straight out like looks. It's gonna That's, age well. Yeah. It's gonna age well. Um. I'm going to disagree with you. I mean, look, the 40N is is great. It's still like, I still can't decide at, at its price point if it is or is not like amplifier of the year. Um, convenience factor wise, obviously the 40N has it over the A110. That, that's not even a question. I am going to say that straight up, because we I did A, B, these two amps side by side as well. Straight up, the Marantz, while great, you feed it, something like audio slaves show me how to live the the, the drums the the Marantz does not have the same type of control separation and dimension in those drums as the Denon now the 40n is what 2500 bucks give or take and the Denon's closer to four grand so this is an instance where it's like if you're willing to spend more and get less by way of features I do believe you are going to hear a difference. That said, the 40N is still fantastic, but it takes going up to about four grand, in my opinion, for you to have that clear sonic upgrade. If you're big on bass, if you care about bass. Yeah, I, I still... This, this one here doesn't care about bass, so... I, don't. I, don't I mean, I I do. <laughs> I do care about bass. I very much care about bass. You just... I, I care about how it's handled. Yeah. And so often... There are just certain types of amplifiers that do not handle the bass in the way that I want them to. Okay. Now, that is completely a personal preference. Sure. There are going to be a ton of people that are going to side with you 100% and say, oh, no, I really want that weightier sound or I want something just a little bit war warmer. Yeah. So they are going to be more happy with the Denon. Mm -hmm. But if that is not, if that doesn't sound like you, and you tend to side more with me and how I like to listen to music, then I think that you'd like the Marantz better. But mm -hmm. over all of them, if you're in this sort of three grand-ish price range, I still think the Roxon is f***ing great. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't watch that review, first of all, shame on you, <laughs> <laughs> go watch it. Uh, I, it's, it's so good, mm -hmm. it is so good. I still think the Technics is better, but it's also ten thousand dollars. Excuse my my language, but ten thousand dollars, and the Roxon I think comes really close. Yeah, 
Um, the only other thing I would say is I, uh, I wanted to add is that I do agree with you as far as the pairing with the Polk R- R700s. Mm-hmm. Great pairing. I wanted to touch on that just really quick, but you can go ahead and finish your thought. I mean, that's it. I just think if you are looking for something to go with the R700s, it's a really, really, really nice, uh, they complement each other really nicely. Yeah. So I don't think you would be disappointed in that matchup. Now, if I know there's probably going to be at least one or two of you ask, well, how did it sound with the Q Acoustic Concept 50s that, you know, I love so much? Have no idea. That is the one pairing we did not. It is the one pairing test. we didn't we didn't bring out, and we didn't bring them out on our corn walls either. But stay tuned because I'm kicking around an idea, and you may see the denon in the corn walls again. Um, with respect to the R700s, though, I have to say I'm not about to say f- f- with a straight face that four thousand dollars for the denon plus two thousand ish dollars for the R700 that that is a bargain. Like, that six grand, seven grand after tax or whatever is cheap. But I will say this, that pairing plus a source of your choosing, something that can be as simple and as affordable as a node or an Arillic as your streamer or your turntable of your choosing, for about seven grand, you will be in possession of a system that will compete with a straight face, will compete with true high-end systems costing ten to fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, I'm dead serious about this. That's how good these two speakers, when these two speakers and this amp, when set up correctly, can really sound. It's amazing. So I, I agree with you. Yeah, I agree with you, one hundred percent. Yeah. All right. That is now our review of Denon's fantastic A110 integrated amplifier. Now it's time for you guys to tell us what you thought. Uh, And how I'm right. And (laughs) and how Christy (laughs) is right. And the question of the day is, I just just wanna know, what type of amplifier, more specifically, what type of bass are you after? That quick, agile, dynamic Christy bass? Or that more natural, organic, textural- Boring Andrew bass. My bass. (laughs) Anyway, uh, let us know down in the comments below. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you have continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And both of us, thank you very much for doing that. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audio File, and that is it for us today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Go watch the Roxon review. Uh, Anyway, that's it for us today. So see you on the next video. Bye.